When I think about the difference between Uber and Lyft, I think of two things. First, I think of Uber as a global, a global company. Uh, when I travel to different countries, often Uber is an option for me. Um, Lyft, I think of as more parochial, more local, more American. But the other big difference and something we're going to cover here in this video is uh, Uber has, to their credit, has made some big commitments to, to going green. Um, quite different than the direction Lyft is going. And frankly, I think by Uber making these big commitments and, and uh, these different strategies, um, they make them more of an attractive company. Uh, because who doesn't want, you know, clean, clean environment, you know, less waste, uh, you know, all the things that come with uh, becoming carbon neutral. So in this video, I'm going to cover uh, what was shared in London, uh, the three initiatives, um, the different strategies, and, uh, and what does that mean to you and me as a driver? And stick around, because at the end of the video, I'm going to share with you what it will take for me to go and drive a 100% electric vehicle. So all that and more coming up. Hey everybody, it's Jay Crater with the Rideshare Guy. Having a little, hmm, got a lot to cover, so let's get into the background. Clean air, clean water, uh, less fires, uh, the, the, the tides not rising as much and, and, and obliterating, you know, uh, neighborhoods. <laughs> uh, these are all, all things that uh, us paying more attention now to protect our environment can, can prevent. Um, Uber uh, is in a strong position to make a big impact because of so many cars and so many uh, people using their different uh, services. So uh, I'm going to share with you what their big three initiatives are and then how they want to go about and achieve them. So let's, so let's start with the three initiatives. First one, to be carbon neutral in North America and Europe. So that's uh, America, Canada, and Europe by 2030. To be carbon neutral globally, so the rest of the countries, by 2040. And number three, to make Uber Eats, which right now is over 800,000 restaurants, carbon neutral by 2040. So these were all announced uh, in London. Um, so again, it's inspiring. I, I, I don't know about you, but I like that. I have a vision board that I update every six months that has kind of images of the things I want to achieve in my life. So I like that Uber has these big, bold uh, initiatives, these visions for, for the world. And it makes me, as much as I'm, I don't like Uber in so many ways and the way they treat drivers, I got to respect that they're out there making these statements and doing things about it. So I'm going to share with you now some of the strategies that they've got. So number one is, uh, you know, electric vehicles and encouraging drivers to drive electric vehicles and encouraging passengers to use electric vehicles. And they have a product called uh, Comfort Electric. So drivers, uh, and, and they offer to pay some nice bonuses. Drivers eligible for Uber Comfort Electric. So these are cars, these are premium 100% electric cars. They can't be any uh, older than, than six years. Um, drivers eligible for Uber Comfort Electric can earn more per hour as a result of higher fares, gas savings, and an extra $1 per trip incentive. For each trip they complete, up to $4,000. Um, with an electric vehicle, drivers can also say goodbye to gas. Drivers using Uber get access to exclusive discounts on home charging options and public charging, like exclusive EVgo discounts and others, which help to boost gas and savings. So what they're trying to do is uh, make it um, financially... Uh, advantageous for you and me, the driver, to say, you know what, uh, I'm going to get an electric vehicle. Now, at this point, that's that's a big ask, I think, because, well, you got to set your home up to do some charging and uh, you're limited to like 300 miles of, of range. Um, I typically drive more than that per day. So it would kind of change uh, the flow of my day. Um, but, you know, if you did 4,000 trips, that's an extra $4,000. So, and that's completely doable. So, um, so, that's, so that's the game. The game for on Uber is, is to encourage drivers to go electric and to encourage passengers to pay a little bit extra uh, for that service. Number two is something called battery aware matching. And this is simply the ability for Uber to see how much battery you have left in your car. And it won't give you any rides that are gonna 
you know, make you uh, run out of one run out of power. Number three is green curbs. So this is at airports. Um, they want to set up these green curbs. So if a passenger chooses to use a uh, an electric vehicle, or or I think even a hybrid counts as green. Um, they're going to have their own curb, which is going to be more convenient than the regular uh, passenger pickups. So number four, sustainable packaging with Uber Eats. So eventually we're going to have the option as an Uber Eats customer to select a restaurant that provides sustainable packaging. And uh, yes, you would pay a little extra for it. But as you're chomping down, down on that burger or, or eating that burrito, uh, you're knowing that at least uh, the stuff that it came in isn't you know, contributing to the demise of, of our environment. Okay, number five is carpooling. I did a whole video about Uber X share and strategies around Uber X share and exactly what are some of the pitfalls and what are some of the benefits of that system. But basically, if a passenger is willing to wait a little bit longer to arrive at their destination and, uh, and, and they get a discount on their fare, they're gonna share the car with other people. So uh, that's, that's the nature of it. And obviously, if you got three people who are doing doing this sh the share, that's three people in one car rather than three separate cars. That that reduces carbon emissions, and that also uh, takes takes more cars off the road. Surprisingly and disappointingly, um, Lyft will not uh, be offering this. Um, they're only focusing on one one car, one driver, um, one passenger, one driver. Um, one car, one passenger. Okay, number six is uh, car sharing, car sharing, car sharing. And this just broke recently. Uh, and you can see here that the street reports, uh, Uber, Uber issues a major challenge to popular car rental app, Turo. Okay, so if you're familiar with Turo, um, what, what Uber is going to be doing is, uh, let's say, I'm going away for the weekend. Let's say I'm taking a, a vacation for to Mexico for three days, leaving on a Thursday, coming back on a Monday. So I can al allow other people to come and drive my car for a certain amount per hour. So when I come back, I'm gonna have some money in my Uber app um, because somebody took my car and, and drove it and used it for the weekend, right? So, I mean, it's a really, uh, it's gotta be a very lucrative uh, program because Uber doesn't have to provide the car, they're just providing the connection, similar to, to the way they do the ride share. So I think it's just a no brainer to uh, eat into Turo's market. And uh, given that everybody, so many millions of people have, have the app, all they've gotta do is add this to the app. Uh, so how does all this affect drivers? Well, it really doesn't. At this point, you can go drive your gas guzzling car and, 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 and do your job, um, but, we are starting to get more incentives to become more aware of what's going on in the environment and uh, and to get a, a hybrid. I drive a hybrid, so sometimes I, I drive somebody uh, green, Uber green. Um, and if I had an EV, I'd, I'd, I would be doing, you know, the Comfort Electric um, that I talked about earlier, um, although I don't think it's in my market just yet. Um, it is in San Francisco. So we're, we're getting we're getting nudged. We're getting pushed in a direction. But at this point, we don't have to take any action. So it doesn't really affect us yet. Um, but I do think over the years, um, as EVs become better cars, um, we're all gonna start to, to, to move in that direction. So what are the key takeaways here? Well, the key takeaway here is, tip of the hat, tip of the hat to, uh, to Uber. I gotta say that they you know, seem to be very serious about um, making things a little bit better uh, in the world. And as much as I said this before, but as much as I hate Uber in so many ways, I, I despise the way that they've been manipulating me through their app, you know, the upfront pay, the, the herky-jerky, you know, uh, some rides are good, some rides are not paying so well, you know, I got to figure it all out, um, how they've changed my pay so many times over the last seven years. Putting all that to the side, I got to say, it, it makes me feel better about Uber that they're doing uh, doing these things. So uh, I guess that's the bottom line. Will I get an EV? I will not get an, an electric vehicle until it gets a f 500, uh, 500 miles of distance. And uh, I believe it's around 3, 350 at this point. 
So when they get to that point, and I'm sure they will get to that point, then it will make sense to me um, to get one. Um, until then, I'm happy with a hybrid where I do have a range of about 550 miles. And, um, you know, I'll, I'll instead of when I go to Starbucks, I'm going to use my cup instead of having having them give me something in plastic. And uh, that, that and my hybrid will have to be my contribution to a better environment at this point. All right. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. This is Jay Crater with The Rideshare Guy. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet to our channel, go ahead and subscribe. We bring a video to you every single day. Um, if you like the video and you learned something, give it a thumbs up. That'll help more people to see it uh, so more people can become aware of what's going on around them, with, with, uh, with, at least with Rideshare with Uber. Um, go tell someone you love them. Go have a great day. Be safe out there. I will see you next time.